Okay, so let's write some code. What I want to do is look at time, system time. I know Chrono has been maintained. It was less maintained. And I believe it's starting to be maintained again. But just as an exercise in using the standard libraries, I thought it'd be a good idea just to do something which sometimes I put off. I don't like working with times and dates if I can help it. It's quite frustrating. So um, sometimes you have to actually just grin and bear it. So let's have a let's have a look at what we can do. So I'll just demonstrate what I've written. And what it does is it gets the system time, which is the number of seconds since the start of the ebook, which was January the first, nineteen seventy. And we've got seconds. And that is the nanoseconds. Not sure, but it's there it's that's the uh the small bit. This is the this is the important bit. And then we subtract uh, 10 minutes. So if you look there, the difference is um, 600 seconds. So hours since the epoch, minutes. So f complete hours plus part of an hour. Uh, let's actually look at the code. Then I'm going to delete it and write it again from scratch, which you may or may not be interested in. That's the code. Take a quick look, because it's going to go at any second. <laughs> if you just want to pause that and copy it, fine. OK, right, I'm going to delete it. So um, I have got the gist of it stored on Rust Playground, which I'll put in the notes. So we're not using Chrono, so we don't have to do any uh, cargo add. We don't have to edit the cargo tool file. So I did undo. Right, let's save that. Okay, so use standard time. And we want to use duration and system time. So duration and system time. That's that's all of our imports. So main. Okay. First thing is let's get the current time. In seconds since start of epoch. So that current time, this is our variable, equal system time now. And let's just uh, print that. And uh, that looks okay. So that's a lot of seconds, but then that was 54 years ago. Uh, we've just got the unused import. Mm. Let's just put that. Uh, the yellow warnings. It must be my OCD, but it, those yellow warnings annoy me. Unused. There we go. That's better. So we can delete that now. And what next? So current time. Next, let's get the. So that was time in seconds and nanoseconds. Let's just check back at the code. Um, 10 minutes ago. So we want to go back in time 10 minutes. So let 10 minutes ago equal 
And then we'll do system time. No. Minus duration. A seconds. Hmm. I thought it was that. What is wrong with that? Okay, it's just it's an E number, isn't it? Better? Happy? Expect duration find integer. Okay, let's check back at the code. Duration from seconds. That's better. Okay, so we've subtracted 600 seconds from the epoch time in seconds. And let's run that. And that's well, that's fairly meaningless at the moment because we're already just printing it and we we don't know exactly what it was. Let's um let's just print current time as well just so we can check again. Ah, uh, there we go. Six thirty versus zero thirty. That's the difference. That's that is the six hundred seconds, which is the ten minutes. If you're wondering how I'm doing the print statement so fast, I've got a key binding set up in uh, init.vim. Uh, uh, config uh, in vim init.vim and I'll just find it for you. There you go. So in insert mode and normal mode, by doing uh, shift and tab, it's putting in println with the colon and the question mark for debug mode. X is just like a placeholder and then left is just to get out of it. Um, Anyway, that's by the by. In fact, I don't want to save it. Okay, so we've got the time since epoch. We've got the time 10 minutes ago. If you're familiar with Bitcoin, you'll know that 10 minutes is a significant time interval. Right, let's see what else we wanted to do do we wanted to so this is the main the main bit which um extract hours so i'm just going to take that and i'm going to try and do the rest from memory extract hours and minutes from the current time this is where you kind of deconstruct your right hand side with the left so I'll show you what I mean um, current hours current mins equal then we do match on current time I wanted to do our seconds again. So match on the current time. Duration since. And then you, <laughs> that's good. It puts earlier for you. So we want to put in 10 minutes ago. 
No, we don't. We want to put in system time epoch. Yeah, because we want to know the, the time since, well, the beginning of time, if you want to call it that, 1970. Um, oh, this is match, so we need to replace that semicolon with this. Um, put that there for now. Um, okay, we're going to get the uh, complaints until we really get this working. So, uh, it matches, but it's different indentation. Okay, so if it's okay, we'll just call our variable duration and that's going to return some stuff uh, comma error error just be like a placeholder it won't actually get used and then we need to think what we're returning we're returning a tuple so that should just be not not we can be anything and then this uh, we want to return the the current hours on the current minutes. So that will be um, let seconds equal duration. And let mins equal duration over 3600. Let's set. Okay, let seconds equal duration dot as sex. Right, match arms have incomparable, incompatible types. Yeah, so we're returning a tuple of not not for the error, so we need to return a tuple here, and that'll be something comma something. Um, let's go back and have a quick look. So we're returning hours minutes so we've got a minutes we did our seconds so we just need to work out the hours calls uh, so that is duration mod um, so duration that's going to be duration of seconds so to get the hours we need to mod it by 3600 will give us the hours and Yeah, the hours is the seconds. The hours is the seconds, seconds over 3,600. 3, and so the minutes is the seconds mod 3,600 over 60.
There we go. Right, that should compile. Good. We've got hours, minutes. So what can we do at the end? We can print them. Um, yeah, let's just print them. Print the current hours. Print the current minutes. And then happy actually we can remove these prints up here now as well. Uh Um, it's not minutes since the box start, it's, it's remaining minutes after hours. Just put a space in there and that make it look nice. And then we're off to the races. There we go. So 473,000 hours, 394. 31 minutes. Let's do, uh, let's just check. System time now duration since there you go, you've got the Rust instructions there. That probably takes us to the Rust docs. Yeah, there we go. They've used the sleep there just to create an, inter, uh, an interval. Elapsed. Um, There's our 174222, blah, blah, blah. So there we go. That's a look at how to work with standard time, duration system time, and how to uh, get the hours and the minutes from the seconds. So the seconds, you divide by 3,600. The minutes, you... You mod the seconds by 3,600 and then divide by 60. What is the time now? 18.34. So run this again. There we go, 34 minutes. 
The minutes is actually the, the complicated one. So you take the seconds and mod it by 3,600. So say you had... Um, Say you had 3,660 seconds, that would be uh, 3,660 seconds, that would be basically an hour and one minute. But so 3,600 mod, that would leave you with 60, and then you would do 60 over 60 would give you one, so that would be one minute because basically mod is not interested in um, not interested in hours or seconds really so yeah bit of a mind bender really but um, yeah that's the good one so yeah the other thing that I got caught up with really was um, duration as seconds I think in a week's time I'll have forgotten that because you just think, well, the duration is seconds, but it's not. You have to convert it to seconds. Anyway, that's me tinkering with time. So thanks for watching.